Hi, I am Cole, and I play... I, oh wait, age then. I am Cole, I play the... Ugh, I did it again. <laughs> I am Cole, I'm 15 years old, and I play the cello in the um, Dort Quartet. My name is Lexi, um, and I play the viola with the Dort Quartet. Uh, my name is Carly. Wait, I forgot the question. So, my name is Carly. I am 14 years old, going into my ninth grade year, and I play the violin. <laughs> it's pretty, um. Uh. I don't have a word. My name is Mora. Um, I'm 16 years old, and I play violin. I can't believe this is happening. I'm Cole. I'm Carly. I'm Mora. And I'm Lexi. And, and we're, we're the, the Door Quartet. Quartet. My name is Davin Pearson Torrey, and I'm director of the Flint School of Performing Arts. The Flint School of Performing Arts is, you know, it's the top ten in the country, and that surprises people, but what it's really about is individual students, most of them children, experiencing music, dance, and now theater setting their own goals and working hard to reach those goals. It's I started teaching at Flint about like 10 years ago, maybe. Two, three years ago, I started getting involved with the screen quartet teaching and I started with the adult ensemble here and then I started doing all the honest string quartet coaching and. Last year, I just got a big job. I get to teach Dort Quartet, so, yeah. Members of the Dort Honor String Quartet are chosen by audition. They're string players, obviously. They're high school aged, and they prepare for an interview, and they perform as well for an outside adjudicator. And they must re-audition every year for participation. I got three girls and one boy in the quartet, and so I have first violin, Carly. <laughs> some viola. Cole is on cello. With four then it's really interesting because we have been doing the virtual classroom. So I, I don't know if it's like really right like where I feel in terms of like virtual classroom because the personality doesn't quite jump up as much because they tend to be quite good and then very quiet and then, you know. No. I don't know. He's good. Apparently I'm good. <laughs> you should be good? Okay, well, just, just uh, practice. Uh, I think there are a lot of similar uh, things they are really looking for so i really I, I feel like the third one you can already hear a lot of things there cole and mora is actually the more like 
active ones, they will, you know, they will give more comments and then they will ask things, you know. Cole, are you going to be ready tomorrow? Or do you want me to hold one, one week off? Um, maybe one week. I think we'll No, no, no you okay. got this. And Lexi and then Carly is my other side of the, the more like introvert of the quartet. They do everything you ask them. Like, can you do it quieter there? And then they don't argue with you. They just do their job, like, you know. And yeah, so I think I have a pretty balanced quartet. It's nice. Good. One, two, three. We are the Benton family. I am Joe Jean, and this is my husband, Dale. We are the parents of Lexi and Cole. Um, our kids have, we have four children. They have twin sisters, Addie and Emma, and they began music, they played strings, all four of them. We have a quartet. Um, at the Flint School of Performing Arts, when they were really little, uh, I just took them to the, like an open house when they were little and let them just explore any of the instruments and see where they gravitated to. Um, trumpets and flutes and right away Cole was on the cello. Lexi picked up strings. They tried all the instruments and that's how they got started. We just let them see what they liked and what they picked up. I was so glad he didn't like a trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, although screeching violins on little five-year-olds was some... It didn't last long though. Interesting years, it but no, pass. it was fun and that's how they got started. The Flint School of Performing Arts has been a Carly's life since she was seven. Um, she started out with summer fun with strings, and that kind of was the hook to kind of get her in. And then when she was um, 11, she started out with the, uh, the Flint U strings, and then she did Philharmonia, and then she did, she was part of FISO and a part of Dort. And um, it's a great opportunity that the Flint School of Performing Arts offers to kids in the area because they've got an incredible scholarship program and Carly's participated in that and it's, and it's for anybody, it's, it's all based on merit. They've got a great fundraiser and donor program so it doesn't matter if you know what background a child has, they provide them with the opportunity to be able to play and develop those skills and talents that they may not otherwise have. Yeah, so I mean, we got used to, like Jojean said, basically living there. It was like a second home, and uh, the kids made so many friends, and they got to spend so much time hanging out in the atrium and um, just playing around. And uh, when when the pandemic hit and they had to be home all the time, we were wondering how it would work. Um, we were concerned, you know, that that aspect of their music education and experience was gone. You know, they couldn't go and be with their friends. They couldn't perform in front of live audiences. And then um, when they had this amazing opportunity to be with the Dover Quartet. I think when I told them, they were just like, oh yeah, cool, you know, this, they don't really look super like, you can, you can't really tell what they're thinking. But then I told them, I, I also sent an email saying, well, go check it out, like, you know, it, it can be like they just don't really know what it is and it and at first we didn't really know what that was even all about uh, we uh, grabbed the youtube and yeah looked up the dover quartet and heard them on the team and we're like So I guess they started checking out and then one day I just hear from like uh, Lexi's mom was like, you know, they are like really, really excited. And I think the real excitement really comes from when they actually finally started working with them. They're probably like, wow, they're real. This, this is real. Dover.
Harper Quartet. We met in school, well, most of us actually, two members of the quartet, Brian and Joel. They've known each other since they were 13 at a music camp. Um, That's and, why they're sitting far apart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Camden and I, we entered Curtis the same year, uh, which was the year after Brian and Joel entered, and they were already in a group together. We formed a group together, and eventually our two pairs gravitated towards one another, and uh, it kind of clicked. So that was like our third year, right? You guys, mm -hmm. your fourth year of school? So the music world is an amazingly small world and musicians all over know each other or their paths cross through performing together, going to each other's concerts. And I remember, this is a while back now, when Milena was a teenager. Uh, my violin teacher from high school, middle school and high school, Melissa Barrett, who is the acting concertmaster at the Jacksonville Symphony, is Davin's sister. And so that's how we first got connected. And it was really exciting to, to know that, I mean, we were in this just unique position, especially considering everything was virtual that whole year, this whole past year, um, to work with students we otherwise would have maybe not even met. Hey, my sister knew her, my sister taught her, and here we are. They were so open and willing to meet the students here and work with them. I mean, it's just, I'd say it was a miracle or it was just, you know, unbelievable, but honestly, that's how music is. It brings people together. One thing that certainly is true is that nobody makes it very far in their field without a lot of help from a lot of different people. And I think also because of our age, I suppose, we, we don't, it's not that long ago that we were receiving a lot of advice and a lot of teaching from people that, that we looked up to who were giving their time, you know, when they were, they were busy, they were on tour and stuff, and they were teaching us. And, and so I do think there's a part of us that really wants to pay that forward. Good. Right now, I'm afraid for your future children because you seem to love your first child a lot. You don't really <laughs> like your second child, and your third child you like a little bit more than the second, but still nowhere near as much as the first one. So try to, it's, this is very depressing, but try to love each one of them very slightly less than the, the one before, but not, not a huge drop off. So you're just really excited, and then... So with the Dover Quartet, and Zoom, I have to say it was the most productive Zoom lesson masterclass type thing that I've ever done. Because with quartet, orchestra, private lesson, it is very difficult to get points across with Zoom musically. And with the Dover Quartet, they knew exactly how to do it right to where I will understand what they're saying, get something out of it, and even feel like even in person, it, I would be getting the same things. Maybe, you know what? I think next week we should just think about all this information we got and then work on the things that you were taught and it will sound so much better next week. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow we're playing with the Dover and I am really excited. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I could not be more excited about this. I mean, I gotta tell you, the Dover Quartet, these, these are rock stars in the classical music world. I was walking through the grocery store and Brian texted, he was like, I guess the group, and he was like, we got nominated for the Grammy. And I was like, I, I was so shocked. I like kind of like dropped a couple of the things I had. I was like, oh my gosh. It was like, I was, I was, <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, wow, that is so cool. I was like, no, he must've made a mistake or looked at the wrong category or something. Yeah, I, I guess I was maybe the first one in the group to, know that we were nominated but I only found out because I saw the tweet from I think it must have been the recording academy um, and then I texted these guys and I sent them a screenshot of the tweet so because I knew they might not believe me <laughs> <laughs> it was a real tweet to hear about it I mean, I've heard them live before, so I know how it feels to be in the room with them. Uh, to see the reaction of Ching Wen, of course, but especially the young members of the Dordana String Quartet when they are 
in person in the same room with these, again, stars of the classical world. And especially after having all these Zoom master classes and interactions and interviews, I think they feel like they know one another, but the actual in-person meeting, and then, oh my goodness, if they get to play together at the Capitol Theater, I mean, what could be better than that? All of us are grateful that we get to have this chance to have them mentor us. I literally cannot believe tomorrow that we get to play with them. It seems like a long time coming. Um, never met them in person before, so this is going to be so super fun. Kind of crazy that everything has come up to this. I am super, super excited that we get to play with the Dover Quartet. It's going to be awesome. We're going to do great. Actually, Cole, why don't we check our lower strings too, just to... You guys ready? Yes. Here we go. This is going to be awesome. Come on. Here we go. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, performing the rendition of Joseph Haydn's Opus 76 No. 1 for String Quartet, please put your hands together for the Grammy-nominated Dover Quartet and the Fleet School of Performing Arts Arm, Dover Quartet.
So that's perfect, dude. You laughing just like ramp it up just a little bit. Cut. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> perfect. You want to do one more time? Sure. Not so the hard times of it, but we yeah, got close to, the door, please, honey. <laughs> um, we got to, like I said, hear the calls going on and. Thank you. 